marketers' whole job is being known, liked, and trusted. That's where we live. I'm trying to be better at getting both being loud so people know, like, and trust me and might want to buy whatever the great product is that I know exists. So a status symbol that is associated with being known aligns very, very well. I completely disagree. I know. And you know what? You're probably right. <laughs> we're, we're controversy. Now we're talking uh we're talking trophies. I think behind if you guys are on YouTube, um behind Tyler and I both, we've grown up in in a in a particular universe, a funnel verse, if you will. And we were reflecting on how effective the click funnels plaque has been. So for folks who are unfamiliar behind us, what they what they did is they said if I think actually the story goes is they were looking at the stats for their users. They were like, hey, how 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 have our users done? And they were kind of asking, like, have have we done, has anybody done a million dollars through a funnel or whatever it was? And that was kind of like every tier was sort of like that, like how much money have people processed through through a funnel? And I think when they first did, there was like 50 folks or something like that, where they're like, Man, 50 people have done a million dollars through a funnel. And so they came with this. They call it the two comma club award. So it's the two comma club, two commas, meaning the two commas that go in uh, writing out $1 million in written out form. You got the two commas there and they started this trophy, which is not uncommon. Like there's lots of associations. It's, it's a really effective marketing practice is to gamify your um, customer loyalty. Right on the small side of it, you've got like these are like literally it's like loyalty cards, punch cards. You go, I get you know a stamp every if I buy ten acai bowls, my eleventh bowl is free or whatever it is, and so that's like a little little form of loyalty gamification. It is, I think, and we're just kind of dissecting ways that that works, and then also looking at like click funnels because it is phenomenal the amount of loyalty that it created and stickiness factor for. A platform. I, I actually, I can't think of something else that has had that. Maybe Starbucks. I I would almost compare it to airline miles for elite travelers, where it's like they won't, they will only book on specific airlines because they're close to their platinum mile. Or, but the difference is that's not as visible, right? It's not so as that's public. something. Yeah. yeah, it's not as public, but it still works. It's private status. Yeah, but people won't leave this platform because they think they're close to, or they may earn in the future. And I, I think one thing that really impresses me is they picked something that was. Obviously, the name of it works, the two comma club, right? You have to earn your way mm -hmm. in. But it's also a milestone that a lot of entrepreneurs are already striving for to earn a million dollars. Or, you know, the, yeah. Um, it's an aspirational. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's in line with an aspiration that cr probably already exists, which is really smart. Maybe a little bit of chicken and egg. I think, well, and so definitely early on, there, it, it's like, it's a reasonable mar mile marker. I think more folks, it's just like as you're going in your business, like, Making a hundred thousand dollars, you know, with with every you know age um, or as time goes on, the the mile markers are more more or less significant there. But I, I remember um, it actually wasn't until it, it wasn't until I'm trying to think where we crossed that revenue threshold, but definitely early on, like my own nature, I had, it was a hundred thousand dollars. Sure, that was the goal, and it's just like all things you you cross it and you move to the next level. Yep. is is what happens. Um, but that public nature. That's what's so unique about it. So when you think about it for your business, loyalty programs are great. They 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 create a stickiness. You know, I, I was trying to think of like great loyalty programs like Starbucks and mm -hmm. their their points. It's gamifying being a customer more. You know it because I'll reload the card. I reload the little and I'm like, I'm a fool for it because I, I like to have it's it's almost like credit card points. It's like I want to be a points millionaire. <laughs> I have absurd amounts of star. I never redeem them. I just love like I know you get over four hundred. It's like the glowing sparkly gold, and yep. I'm like pushing the limits of like how many points can I collect in this thing because um it, it's probably the same whatever part of the brain that loves just collecting things for collecting and and Starbucks has done that for me. My lifetime value is going to be you know probably around a. A small house at Starbucks, <laughs> um, and an airline miles. It's actually a venti house, but yeah, ben <laughs> <laughs> you mean a tall, a yeah, tall house? Tall, sorry, a yeah. tall house, <laughs> a tall, tall house. But a lot of these rewards, incentives, loyalty programs are private. It's a, it plays on an element of status. 
that's the brilliance of um, call it trophies or awards is its public status that becomes a cycle of marketing. Like I don't know how many people I've had to explain what that, what that is in the background and I'm championing someone else's brand as I'm doing that. So like my, because my, I feel my status elevated, I'm willing to publicly share it all the while reaffirming someone else's platform. It's just, it, it's a phenomenal example of this. And so we were, we were contrasting it to other, there are other uh, folks and even platforms that have you know started to enact and use trophies, but there's an actual functional side of it where, it, you know, I remember my uh, dad, he got his uh, realtor's license and he went to work for Century 21. And they had these little like uh, the gold statues. Well, Century 21 was known for if you hit a certain level, you also got a gold blazer. And the gold blazer. Yeah. That's exactly right. So there was, so they had these like trophies, right? Yeah. And you did it. And I remember you going, there were people who had like shelves full of the trophies. Oh, yeah. They could do it. It's a little bit older of a style. Like you don't have as many people. You don't look in our backgrounds and there's not like a lot of shelves of trophies in there. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's playing off of, you know, like other award ceremonies. So you go to other places and they have like, oh my gosh, I won an Oscar. You know, th- there it is. It's, it's a, a trophy on a shelf, um, but it's just harder to present. Like it's easier in person. You're like, oh, I have it in the room. I think behind me on the other side, I've got another one of those kind of trophies. And it's like, it's a little thing on a desk. It's there. You don't even, you really don't notice in the background. The plaques, so clever. And and we were talking like, uh, practically speaking, I have another plaque award um, for a an accomplishment that I actually feel, I don't know, I've benefited more from. However, <laughs> the plaque is heavier and it's harder to hang. And so I, I just can't actually get it on the wall because I have to find a stud and, uh, and, and the, like the hanging mechanism isn't as easy. Like click funnels, ironically, it's a lighter plaque. It's not like a heavy duty frame. You're like, this is nice. I could put a little pin tack, hang it on there. And, uh, you know, we're good. It, it, that's probably overstating. It. It's not. Yeah. Pin-tack, but you know, yeah. you know what just hit me is that I think part of it, cause you said you'll be on a call with someone, they'll see it and they'll ask what it is. Um, do they ever ask you, Oh, are you in, are you a recording artist? Are you in music? Right. Because, Sometimes. Yeah, yeah because it exactly has, right. people know what it means to go platinum or to go gold in a different yeah. industry. So they also borrowed something that yeah. has some globe, almost near global familiarity as a status. And status. Yeah. yeah. So they said, OK, I'm yeah. going to take an, a, an, a, a, like a known status symbol. And then overlay it into what we're doing with our status. I just think there's so many layers to what makes an effective thing, right? And um, this is so interesting because yeah. I think I should um, next time I get to talk to them, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this question because I want to know from their perspective. Was this like a potato chip where there's like, oh, we just slimly we we sliced the potato too thin and lucked out that it was a potato chip, or was there like was this a four hour meeting and they went back and forth on the details, or if it was an evolution? But I think it's largely unchanged yeah my understanding was they were uh they were going to be having funnel hacking live in nashville and they were on site like checking out locations and they were coming down an escalator and they saw all the walls of the records and it was like oh we should do something like this but i don't think it was as strategic as we like oh we want it to be all these layers i think these are things we can look backwards and say this is why it works so well well, and I, yeah, there's no way they could have known right at the moment when they started doing it because plenty of other folks have done similar things with similar trophies and yeah, there's, there's little pieces there. So in, in hindsight, we look back and so, uh, for our community, we actually just launched it this year and I haven't, they're still hashing out the details, but basically knowing what I know, I'm like, I'm doing the exact same thing. Easy to hang looks like it could be uh uh you know gold looks like it could be like i'm just like i'm not going to reinvent the wheel yeah no um, reason to but it'd be interesting to deconstruct this and look at like what other status symbols exist yeah what are the other things and they've actually they've done it at their next tier they do they do a ring so clever it's like they're like oh super bowl ring and you know artists and so the, these are these are really global status symbols yeah so if you know you're starting to do this in your in your uh business if someone is listening or watching and they have a maybe a SaaS agency or a business what they what should they be looking at 
And what should they be considering in building in either gamification or status into their business? This is, um, it grows with time. So the easy, like the best thing is to look and be like, well, what what have my people done? That's like that's what catalyzed it for ClickFunnels. Like, who gets an award? What have they accomplished? And then we can kind of uh, reward from there. So you don't have to like decide on the accomplishment before someone actually reaches the accomplishment. It's sometimes easier to do it in hindsight. But if you look at lower tiers, there they gamified the idea of shirts. I've heard this story. Like that was another aspect of retention is they would send shirts to anybody and everybody, right? And and uh, they had an identity on the shirt. So sometimes it was, um, you know, you could center around your brand. And, and sometimes that works. Most times it doesn't. Most brands fall flat because there's not enough of a collective identity there where people want to assume the identity of the brand. However, you can create an identity that is aligned with the brand. You actually create a separate identity and you make that the kind of shirts that you're putting out there. And so like, if you think um, what we do is we have a, a kick SaaS CEO shirt. So, and that was, that was intentional. It's like, hey, that is, that is our brand, but it's an aspirational identity for the people in our ecosystem. We're not, put, we're not asking them to wear you know, shirts that say HL Pro Tools or anything like that on it. Um, we, would rather, we would rather be known for championing the destination of where they want to go. And so on little levels, so there's that's so like shirts are a great way to do it. Um, you can, you know, create other kind of collateral and, and materials around that. Um, and, and the key with the gamification is, is you can align behaviors. So for us, we've done it at different cycles, but like if I was, if I was another SaaS brand and let's say I'm doing it for chiropractors and I call my identity the, you know, Seven figure Cairo. I'm sure this exists. I'm sure somebody else has this, but whatever it is, seven figure Cairo. Or it's like, um, I like here's another identity that I resonate with, and this is uh, front row dads. Is they they say it's uh, um, family man with a business over businessman with a family. So that little structure there, they're like, you know what? Who's our? What's our aspe- aspirational identity? It's uh, family man with a business. So they call it, it's F M W. A, B, something like that. And it's like code. But for your, your ideal avatar, like, uh, like I, it resonates. It feels I- exactly for me, you know, what I'm in pursuit of. And, uh, and I would wear that swag. I would wear that swag. But how do you attain it? You align, you know, activities there. So they've got things like, hey, when you recommend or refer folks in, that's how you get the swag. So if I was doing it for, like I said, the, the SaaS brand, and if it was the seven-figure Cairo, it'd be like, hey, when you finish onboarding, we send you a shirt or whatever it is. And so you start to connect, you start to reward the behavior. And that's that's like the the punch card. Hey, you buy 10 acai bowls, we'll give you your 11th one free. And uh, those little like mile markers of success. And if, you're, if your swag or if your brand is something that they would, is part of an identity they want to celebrate in small ways, you'll start to get more traction that way. And I, I love it. Like that's, it, it's, it's super cool to me where I see folks wearing our stuff out in the real world. Um, and maybe it's because I'm so selective. Like I, I, don't, I don't love just wearing free shirts for the sake of free shirts. And so I'm like, okay, it needs to be a comfortable shirt, one, and then it needs to be something like I would want to wear and I'd be proud to wear. And so even though, and it's also that, and that's, is it's subtly reinforcing we're on the same team, even if publicly it's not saying we're on the same team, right? And that's the same thing with the plaques. Every time I share it, I, I'm proud of it. It's like the world doesn't know that I'm on the team, but I'm telling the world I'm on that team um, because I'm associating my status with it and, and because I, f- I feel built up with it. And so um, in those ways, I think you can start to get creative. And I've, I've known some entrepreneurs that struggle with embracing status, right? Like status exists. Uh, and they're almost like, no, I don't want that. But, uh, you know, and I think Russell Brunson once explained it, like some people would say, oh, I don't want a uh, Lamborghini. I just, I'm a practical family and I want a minivan. He's like, well, that's what stands out for your status. Status is just different for each person. How, um, how can people be embracing the right type of status for their audience? Well, and that's, it's, it's understanding your avatar. Like it's understanding, actually it's mapping out what the, I, I use this language. I don't know if I adopted it from someone, but it, I mean, it's just common words, but I feel like I use it a lot as this aspirational identity is so critical because that's what I want to speak to. And that is that like, 
there is status around there. And like, I remember that story is it was like, I don't like the Lamborghini. Like I, I want, you know, a minivan and you're like, well, that's still, that's still status. It's still building up your status is, is you want to be the practical person who has a practical car that takes care of your family. Like that's, that's an element of it. And, um, and so understanding who you're serving and that kind of like depths of where they find status in and aligning it in that way. And so it's part of their identity. Like maybe they care about organic ingredients. You know, they care about fair labor. They care about a woman owned business. They care about the other, the causes you support or whatever it might be. When you get clear on that and actually start to lean into it, it works so well. It works really, really well because now you've got a, you've got a better idea of how you can build someone's status up in a way that feels beneficial. Cause that's sometimes the dissonance is people will try this out and they'll try kind of like a cookie cutter way. They'll just say like, well, this is what this, you know, MLM did. So that's going to be my, you know, status symbol. And there's an environment where your customers, like there's just varying degrees of like who you serve, but like, are they, how competitive are they? How, how much do they um, aspire to, um, to be known? So for marketers, you're like, our whole job is being known, liked, and trusted. Like that's, that's where we live. We're like, I'm trying to be better at, at getting, po- at being loud so people know, like, and trust me and might want to buy whatever the great product is that I know exists. So a status symbol that is associated with being known aligns very, very well. If I was doing this for, you know, um, I think of like people on our team and like our, our developers, they would not want a flashy sign behind them. Like they just wouldn't resonate with, we actually asked about, so like we almost did like neon signs. So both Todd and I both also have neon signs in our background because we're marketers. We're like, ah, and, uh, they'd be like, oh my gosh, no, never, ever would I have the neon sign there. Um, and so we did, we did trophies that went on their desk that only they see and they loved it. So they still like recognition. They still like winning. Their status is private and for their families. Like that's actually like for for them, it was like the recognition to their families, I do great work was better than if we put a sign behind them that could be on video. They're like, ah, that that just doesn't, that's not the kind of status that I want to have. And uh, so yeah, understanding your audience, understanding who you're serving at every point and then if you can find that like sweet spot where the award, the gamification of loyalty is such that they would want to share it publicly, you get a crazy network effect happening. Yeah, really, really amazing stuff. Awesome, everyone. Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this episode of Market with Matt and share it with an entrepreneur who also wants more margin in their life and business.